Good evening and welcome to another episode of IMED. As we all know that uh, this is a program that we always talk about uh, diseases, ailments, cures and what are the uh, precautions you need to take, especially uh, if you are a person contracted with coronavirus and various uh, other uh, diseases that uh, are currently going on uh, uh, globally and uh, locally. But today we are going to discuss on a very important uh, topic about uh, subfertility and infertility. And to uh, talk on this, I have with me uh, Dr. Sanat uh, Lanrol, who is a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist of the Colombo Council Hospital for Women in Sri Lanka. Good evening to you, Doctor. Good evening. Good evening. Well, very important thing that obviously that uh, occurs around subfertility, infertility. What exactly is infertility? Yeah, uh, actually, infertility or subfertility. This is a global problem global problem and the, the, the disease burden is about 57 million couples suffer from subfertility in, in the globe. So when you take sub, when you take the subfertility, uh, it is according to the uh, World Health Organization, it is a disease of uh, the human reproductive tract and it is inability to conceive having had unprotected sexual intercourse for the period of one year. If you have more than one year, then it is classified as subfertility. So there are there are millions of couples in the world who face this. Generally one in six couple in the in the in the world they have the problem of subfertility. They got actually they get married and they have unprotected intercourse for one year, yet they don't conceive. So this is a this is a global problem and this is a social problem and sometimes it is a social stigma because having married and there are cultural uh, issues are coming up. If you are not pregnant, other people are very inquisitive and it is a uh, stress to the couple. So it, it, is a, it is a kind of a huge human problem because uh, when, a, when a couple married, it is a, it's a human rights for that couple to decide when to have a child and, and the spacing of the child and the timing of child and it is, it is, uh, it is uh, you know, it is a close problem to that uh, couple, but uh, sometimes in different cultural, uh, you know, uh, cultural scenarios, it is going to become a, uh, become a national and a local problem as well. <laughs> uh, doctor, another thing is that uh, you're talking about subfertility. You said couples have, but isn't this more common with the westernized countries than the uh, east uh, other countries? Uh, there's no difference like that because it is, it is a global problem and it I, I think it is it is, uh, it is almost equal because any country uh, it is there about uh, one in six marri were married or were living together or whatever you say uh, they are having they are facing this problem everywhere in the globe now you said uh, a couple married or a couple after one year uh, who do not uh, a, a female who does not conceive how can this occur? Is it uh, relevant uh, with the food that you have or is it something that comes in from uh, your ge genetic uh, things, from your past food, from your parents to your grandparents or how does this all uh, occur? Yeah, uh, the, the causes, yeah. what you said is, it is multifactorial and it is individual, in, uh, actually individualized. It is uh, the, the, the one factor related to this couple is not the cause for the other, other couple. So it is an individualized kind of, kind of uh, treatment, and individual the cause is individualized. And there are a lot of lot of causes for this. Uh, if we take a normal couple, if a uh, normal couple when they when they are having unprotected sex for a one year, only eighty five percent of them get pregnant. So that is the natural way. That is a natural scenario of getting pregnant. But most of our, most of our uh, married couples, they actually they get worried because uh, having consummated the marriage for two to three months, they expect children. But they, if they are not, they think it is abnormal. It is not abnormal. You have to wait at least one year. Even though you you and your partner is normal, only eighty five percent of people will get children within the period of one year. And other other fifteen percent. Is the the is, is the people who face this problem? Out of that, as you said, there are a lot of reasons. There are male factors and there are female factors. 
there are genetic factors and there are social factors and and uh, sometimes based on your food what you are taking and chemicals and and your job and everything contribute to subfertility uh, so uh, doctor obviously in uh, more the uh, not develop or the third uh, the developing countries it's always identified that if you don't have uh, a child within a year or two it's always the female gender that has been uh, gets allegated saying that uh, uh, that this uh, person can't uh, deliver babies or can't uh, conceive but it doesn't occur the male also can be a part of this is it exactly exactly uh, when you analyze these facts uh, the these couples when you analyze uh, the 35% of the problem comes within the female partner and another 35% it is due to male partner so it is equal e on <laughs> equal uh, basis that both pa uh, partners should be responsible for these factors and uh, then other 30 percent is uh, sometimes it is unexplainable there is no reason we can find because uh, for the for the test available at present we test them and we examine them but we can't find out a reason for them not to, to. Uh, not to have children so answer to your question the male and female are equally responsible and it is not the fault of the female herself because normally it's the female that gets cornered saying that okay you, you're the uh, cause for this and certain uh, things but then the, the male also has a part to play exactly in in the countries like uh, southeast asia the females are marginalized because of this fact and but uh, they should realize that it is male also should get the uh, should be responsible for that what are the challenges that uh, a couple would have to uh, ha conceive or to have babies, doctor? Like, yeah, it is a huge challenge because you know you have to, you have to overcome the, the, the your stress level, then your your uh, you know social uh, responsibilities, and sometimes your profession and everything. Because uh, this subfertile treatment, it it is costly. It is not uh, that uh, you know cheap, and it takes time. And you have you have to contribute. You have to you know you have to dedicated to that treatment if you want to get and you have to be patient right because within one month you won't get uh, results if you are on subfertility treatment it it, ta it takes time so you have to be patient and these are the challenges a, a couple face because uh, some some couples they want to have the children soon when uh, when the treatment start it won't happen even the even the other there are a lot of treatment modalities and and there are factors that can be corrected sometimes some surgeries can be done and uh, so it takes time so the huge challenge is your patience you have to you have to be patient to get the results <laughs> uh, what would be the best time period that you would recommend uh, for a couple to uh, have children or have a baby so ideally it is in your your 20s and 30s that is the, that is the uh, that is the uh, best part in your life and your systems are working properly and that is the best part if you want to get married and have a baby but nowadays with our busy uh, life uh, schedules and uh, and uh, then the education and the economical states most of the couples get married after 30 so having said that uh, but it's okay and uh, the science is ready to help you and uh, the subfertility is remain it's same and uh, the the when you are getting older and older the chances of getting pregnancy is lesser and lesser because the number of ova is number is there of any particular system. age limit that uh, you say beyond this uh, age you cannot get uh, pregnant yeah generally after 40s your number of eggs are getting diminished so your chances are getting less for a natural conception after that uh, you can go for uh, assisted reproductive technologies that is a science yeah. so that they can help to have a children if you, if you are if you are in a tight corners uh, you talked about treatments, uh, doctor. What are the common treatments that uh, take place with subfertility? Yeah, common treatment is ba uh, based on uh, the individual cause. Uh, initially, I mentioned about the the thing is uh, the female causes. The female causes there is some problem with the anatomy of the female uh, genital tract. You know, there are some people born with uh, the blocks of the fallopian tubes. So, so however you tried natural conception methods, it won't be successful. In that case, sometimes you have to offer surgery to correct the tubes, or you have to offer uh, this IVF test tube babies for them. Yeah. Uh, some ma some uh, couples they are having sexually transmitted disease previously, and their system is damaged because of that. 
so they have to get treatment. The other causes, this uh, there are diseases cause endometriosis, then the pelvic inflammatory diseases. For them, there are surgical treatment, then there are medical treatment, and all these com in combination they can get the uh, results. For the male, main problem is they are having uh, number of sperms are low, or the quality of sperms are less, and the other thing is some males they don't have sperm at all. So there are different causes. So treatment based on uh, different uh, different causes, and if there is a block in your tube that carry that carries the sperms that can be corrected surgically, and you you are blessed with a child then. And if you don't have sperms enough, then there are medications to take, and why, why and when you take medications, the number of sperms and the quality of sperms will be increased. So you can achieve results based on the based on the course what you are having that is individualized and uh, there are no uh, blanket treatment for that. But there are uh, uh, that, uh, that you can do some things commonly those are the lifestyle modification. The lifestyle modification is as you all know that smoking has a very negative impact on fertility. Then the alcohol it has a very negative impact on fertility and the substance abuse you know these uh, substances uh, these drugs those are you can modify that is a common platform you can stop smoking you can stop alcohol taking alcohol substance. and the and the substance abuse you can completely there are people who are addicted to this and and they force actually they face problems and uh, then you can reduce weight if your if your weight is uh, that means uh, we measure as uh, uh, this body mass index BMI, if BMI is more than 35, then your fertility is less. So, if you reduce your weight, then your fertility will be high. Does it case. occur to the male and female both uh, on uh, the weight? Yeah, it is both. In female, there is a disease called polycystic ovary. The, the, this, uh, these patients, they are, they are really, they are very obvious. Their BMI is more than 35. And just because you reduction, you reduce the weight, you will be pregnant. You do not need any other <laughs> treatment. That is why sometimes it is very simple, sometimes it is complicated, but common things are common. These are the things you can commonly uh, do to improve your uh, fertility. Uh, does the stress level also take a big part in uh, this? Uh, doctor? Exactly. Stress level plays a huge role because nowadays society, we all under stress. We all talk of stress and how to reduce the stress. Stress will cause uh, the, the number of good hormones in the body and uh, it will reduce the, these hormones. Because of that, the the fertility is going lesser. If you are under stress, if you are a male, your number your number of sperms will be less, and the mortality of the sperms will be less. And sometimes there are abnormal shapes of the sperms that uh, they can't get pregnant. Uh, so these are the all based on based on this uh, stress. In that case, you have to get the some kind of uh, consultation or some kind of counselling from a specialist to reduce the stress level. And by reducing the stress, you will get pregnant. Uh, doctor, you did mention about uh, test tube uh, babies. What is the uh, position that or what is the time that uh, you would come in to recommend uh, that couple? Okay, you need to have you. Y this is the best way that you can have have a child or ha have a newborn because uh, you are not uh, in the position to uh, produce babies. Is there a specific uh, like system or steps that you come into that you find out? Yes, yes. There are there are there are special indication for uh, these test tube babies. The reason is test tube babies are expensive, and there should be there uh, and uh, you have to try basic methods. Once you try the basic method of uh, the fertility treatment, if all these are failed, you can go for the as a tertiary level uh, these test tube babies, but primarily you can go if you if you know that your both tubes are blocked I, or if you have uh, this severe endometriosis that kind of thing or severe pelvic intermediate disease uh, that kind of thing then you should not waste your time on this uh, primary and secondary level of treatment then you have to straight away you should go for the test tube babies how safe it is uh, to have uh, test tube, uh, tube babies transaction uh, will the uh, uh, mother have any after effects uh, with uh, delivery? Obviously, there are no, uh, no uh, not significant after effects because uh, in test tube babies also we use medicines 
and, medi and medicines ha they have their own side effects, but we can control them and uh, based on safe limits and your, your doctor will look after those things and it has helped about, uh, about three for actually lot of uh, babies to be born because of the test tube uh, technology. Uh, and also for the newborn, uh, the newborn becomes a normal healthy uh, child, is it uh, doctor? Yeah, most of, the, most of the these babies, uh, they, are, they have the normal healthy life and the incidence of uh, other abnormalities are not that high, uh, though it is test tube or naturally conception. Uh, doctor, I am going to co come back to a uh, topic that we discussed earlier is what uh, normally sometimes in marriages you get uh, couples going on and on for 5, 6 years, 7 years, so sometimes even 10, but then suddenly around the 10th to the 9th year, uh, the uh, uh, female gets uh, conceived. Why, what is the whole system on, of the, because they have been trying for so many years, but it does not come, but then suddenly after 10 years you are uh, conceived with the baby. Yeah, there are there are different different reasons for your question, yeah, yeah. and there is no one particular reason because once you're getting old, sometimes your hormone ho hormones also plays a part in this. Yeah. So thyroid hormones, uh, thyroid hormone is one of them, and sometimes uh, with the with the time, these hormone level getting normalized, and then suddenly you get pregnant. That is one reason. Other reason is you know this uh, this eggs is released. Sometimes eggs is not released in the proper time. So, suddenly it even in 5, 6 years time, then suddenly if an egg is released in the proper time and if it meet its partner, so you will get pregnant. So, these are the sporadic very, very rare occasions uh, which has a scientific ex explanation in that way. And coming to the genetic part of it, uh, sometimes uh, it goes from generation to generation. If uh, the for the grandmother took two years to have the baby, the mother took two years, they say, oh, so you will have to wait for it. Is, is this true? Can this also happen, doctor? Yeah, it can happen. Some some families there are some genetic predisposition to have this kind of fertility, so they do have this kind of pattern which we which we have, uh, have experienced, uh, but not uh, everybody. But this segment is very slim, and this is uh, what you said uh, may be correct. Yeah. Uh, doctor, anything else that you would want to uh, describe about the sub fertility and info? Yeah, but again, uh, to based on the COVID-19, yeah. now these days, uh, the people are scared, especially young generation is scared about having the COVID vaccination and, th and there is a, there's a, some kind of a discussion going on whether COVID vaccine has impact on fertility. I have to mention that so far there are no evidence I have found that COVID vaccination has any impact on fertility. So, even you are under fertility treatment, uh, you are under subfertility treatment, you can get the COVID first and uh, then the second vaccination and while you are on the treatment, you can, you can uh, continue your subfertility treatment and, and there is no evidence so far that COVID vaccination has any impact on fertility. Uh, because I think that is uh, something very important that you touched on, Doctor, because uh, we noticed that uh, uh, with the vaccination being given towards uh, uh, people at the age of 20 to 30, the vaccination uh, uh, percentage has dropped a lot because of uh, this uh, myths that they are having. So, that explains that you need not be uh, afraid of uh, fertility. Exactly. At the, at the moment, the, the evidence are mounting uh, that uh, subfertile uh, young people and uh, even the normal people, they, they should get vaccinated, they should not have any fear on the fertility. Uh, I want to come back to the uh, test tube uh, uh, babies uh, topic, uh, uh, Dr. Vic, since we have a little bit more time. Uh, is there also an age limit that uh, a person can have a test tube baby or even uh, as you said going further on, maybe even past 50 years and all, can they still have a test tube baby? Yeah, actually that, uh, that based on the country where you are getting treatment, different countries have their own protocols, their limitations and their, their legal boundaries. So, uh, based on that, generally there are some guidelines. So, uh, those guidelines, those countries, doctors, they practice. But having said that, if you, if you really need even 50, we have seen in the, in the literature, in the history, even 55 years, they, they get uh, children by using these artificial reproductive technologies. Uh, so, those are the, those are the minor, minor incidents. But uh, basically, there are some indications that uh, you have to practice uh, normal things and the first line, second line and then only 
you have to embark on uh, this uh, artificial uh, treatments. So, it has been tested and proven that it is quite safe to have test tube babies. Yeah, during the, during the line of the history, it is, it is very well uh, evidence and very well supported uh, that it is safe. Uh, how does the whole process uh, work, uh, doctor, especially if you want to have a, uh, a test tube baby? Does it uh, have the same uh, way that a normal pregnant mother uh, would go about the nine months uh, sequence? Yes, of course. Having had uh, having had uh, test tube baby does not deviate uh, the normal uh, root cause of uh, the delivery. But uh, what we have found is most of these mothers they have some one or more other other factors uh, like diseases uh, related to that. In that case, uh, we sometimes we have to deliver these babies early. Otherwise, there is no reason to deviate uh, from the normal delivery. Uh, okay, doctor. I think uh, we've touched uh, a lot on subfertility and uh, infertility, and given a lot of uh, information uh, to our viewers on how they should go about it. Where you need to uh, seek medical uh, advice, the advice given by the doctor when uh, you need to be patient to uh, uh, conceive, or you need to take it uh, step by step. Anything else that you would want to uh, sum up, uh, doctor? On this? Uh, this subfertility, sir, uh, we know it is a problem to you and it is a stress to you and sometimes it is socially also uh, you are getting uh, getting uh, social pressure on it uh, so if you are if you are having the problem please be patient and go back to the correct doctor don't go, actually some people go everywhere and changing one f uh, consultant to one physician to another physician so keep faith on one good doctor select your doctor and go ahead then you will be successful all right. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor, on those uh, very important uh, insights once again given to us uh, on uh, subfertility and infertility. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lenroll, for joining us on uh, today's episode of uh, IMED. Pleasure. Well, with that, uh, we've come to the conclusion of another episode of uh, IMED. Hope you had uh, very good uh, information on what you need to do uh, in terms of subfertility and uh, how you need to uh, work on the infertility part uh, and how when do you need to uh, consult doctors, what you need to really do uh, to uh, conceive yourself and have babies uh, and bring in the, the next generation. So thank you very much for joining us uh, on today's episode of IMED. Till we meet again with our next episode of IMED, it's good night to you. <laughs>